It is safe to say that when using the chain rule, this particular rule in finding a derivative of function is used when you have a function inside a parenthesis raised into a power. So whenever you have this type of function, you can use the chain rule to find its derivative. And to look at it mathematically, we can also see a composite function looking at a of x, wherein our f of x will be the parentheses cubed represented by x cubed, and our g of x will be the function inside the parentheses, which is 5x plus 1. Now the composite function f of g of x, which is simply your a of x, can be written as 5x plus 1 raised to the third power, which is the original function right here. So this particular function can be represented as a composite function. That's why chain rule is basically the rule that we use in finding the derivative of a composite function. So some composite functions that you will encounter in this particular um, problem will be m of x, which is given by 3x minus 2 raised to 7, wherein f of x is x to the 7th power, and g of x would be 3x minus 2, or the function inside the parentheses. And if we have b of x equal to the square root of x plus 1, f of x here will be the square root of x, or the square root of the parentheses, and g of x will be the function inside the radical symbol, which is x plus 1. And another representation of a composite function using chain rule will be c of x equal to e raised to 3x raised to 2 over 3, wherein f of x will be the parentheses raised to 2 thirds represented by x raised to 2 thirds, and g of x will be the function inside, which is a e raised to 3x. Now, let's use the chain rule in finding the derivative of some composite functions. So since we started with a of x, which is 5x plus 1 raised to the third power, we know that this is a composite function wherein f of x is x cubed and g of x is the function inside the parentheses 5x plus 1. Now in finding the derivative of a of x, it's simply finding the derivative of f of x and g of x. So here I have the derivative of the parentheses, which is parentheses cubed. Now I'm representing the inside function as a box, so we can be able to visualize it as two functions, times the derivative of the inside, which is your box. So here we know the derivative of f of x is 3x squared. So now we have here 3 parentheses square times the derivative of the inside, which is your box right here represented by g of x. And we know the derivative of g of x is 5x plus 1. I mean the derivative of 5x plus 1 is simply 5. And putting them all together and simplifying this function, a prime of x will be 3 times 5 times parentheses raised to the second power. And we know that the box that I am referring here in my illustration is simply your g of x or the function inside the parentheses. So to complete our work, a prime of x would be 15 times the quantity 5x plus 1 raised to the second power. And that's how we use the chain rule in finding the derivative of a function raised into a power or a composite function. So let's have our second composite function and we have f of x is equal to the quantity 3x squared minus 7x raised to the fifth power. So we know that if we are going to separate them, f of x will be the parentheses raised to the fifth power or x to the fifth and g of x will be the inside function which is 3x squared minus 7x. So first we need to find the derivative of f of x which is the derivative of your parentheses raised to the fifth power times the derivative of the inside which is 3x squared minus 7x. Now the derivative of the parentheses will be 5 times the parentheses raised to the fourth power and the other derivative that we're going to use here will be the derivative of the inside, which is 6x minus 7. And putting them all together, we have 5 times 6x minus 7, which is the derivative of your inside, multiplied by your parentheses, which is 3x squared minus 7x raised to the fourth power. This one's supposed to be fourth power and as well as this one right here. This is supposed to be 4. So this is 
the derivative of our function number 2, 3, or distribute 5 to 6x minus 7, and you'll have 30x minus 35, times the quantity 3x squared minus 7x raised to the fourth power. And this is how we use our chain rule in finding the derivative of composite functions. Now let's have another example, and this time instead of using a parenthesis, let's, let's use a radical function. So we'll have f of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 1. So we know we can separate this function and uh, separate our f of x and g of x into the parentheses as our f of x raised to 1 half and g of x will be the function inside which is 2x plus 1 and just like what we did in our previous examples we're going to find the derivative of f of x times the derivative of g of x which is basically in our language the derivative of our parentheses times the derivative of the inside now the derivative of the parentheses raised to one half is simply one half parentheses raised to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside which is simply two and putting them all together we'll have one half times two times our parentheses raised to negative one half and we know that this box right here is represented by the inside function 2x plus 1 so putting them all together we have f prime of x equal to 2x plus 1 raised to negative one half and if you want to further simplify it to get rid of the fraction as your exponent and the negative sign in your exponent we can change f prime of x from here into 1 all over the square root of 2x plus 1 now let's have the derivative of uh, our fourth function, which is y equals quantity x plus 5 all over 2x cubed raised to the fifth power. Now here our f of x is our parentheses raised to the fifth power, and our g of x, or the one inside the box, will be x plus 5 all over 2x cubed, which is a rational function. Now to find the derivative of f of x, it's... a uh, a lot easier than finding the derivative of g of x. So the derivative of parentheses raised to the fifth power is simply five parentheses raised to the fourth. And the derivative of our rational function here, we will use the quotient rule to be able to find its derivative. So if we're going to simplify our function here or find its derivative, we'll have two x cubed times one, which is the derivative of i, minus x plus five times six x squared, which is the derivative of low, all over the square of your denominator, which is two x cubed squared. Now, if we're going to simplify the numerator of this rational function, we'll have two x cubed minus six x cubed plus 30 x squared, all over 4x raised to the 6th power. And if we're going to put them all together, the derivative of this rational function raised to the 5th power is simply 5 times our g of x of x plus 5 all over 2x cubed raised to the 4th power times the derivative of g of x, which is 2x cubed minus quantity 6x cubed plus 30x squared all over 4x raised to the 6th power. And that is how we use the chain rule in finding or solving for the derivative of a composite function.